In last week's video, I designed and built this indexing attachment for the lathe, and I intend to use it to inscribe graduations on hand wheels such as these. Now, while we did have some success, it was a case of close but no cigar, as we had some problems with the angular accuracy, resulting in differences in the distances between these, these division lines. So in this week's video, we're gonna debug the system, see if we can uh, improve the accuracy of those angular divisions and make this into a usable tool. So the first thing I wanna look at is the fit between this uh, 3D printed pin plate and the um, expanding mandrel. When I machined it last week, I overshot my dimension and we've got quite a lot of play in there. So I suspect that this could be the source of our error. When troubleshooting problems like this with a prototype that I'm designing, I like to try and get to the root cause of problems uh, as quickly as I can with the least amount of effort so that we can minimize the amount of time that we waste remaking parts and so on. So I'm breaking out the engineering big guns here and bringing the sellotape into play to take up the slack in that tolerance between the, the mandrel and the pin plate. And that does indeed seem to be a much better fit now. So what we'll do is we'll get this reassembled and do some more test cuts and see if this has fixed the problem. So when we started out, um, I was quite hopeful. Um, I thought the, the, the cuts were looking quite good, quite consistent. But um, as we progress, you can see, um, no, unfortunately, uh, we've still got some quite large errors here. So there's something else going on. So it was at this point, I went back to investigate the rest of the mechanism and found something uh, a little bit more worrying. And that's that I can see quite a lot of movement in the pin plates here. I think a lot of this is down to the uh, lack of rigidity in those 3D prints, but also I can see that pin moving. And if we check some of the other holes, it gets even worse. So this is definitely gonna be causing us some of those angular errors. Now, if we take a look at the pin plate in isolation, we can see the pin rocking backward and forward. So it's, it's kind of seesawing in the hole there, which means that the hole is uh, oversized on both the, um, the front end and the back end, although it seems to be reasonably two size in the middle. Now that problem points to the reaming and more specifically not being square with the reamer. Now, looking back at the footage from when I uh, did the reaming, um, the, the, the reason for the lack of squareness is obvious. I'm doing it by hand. So reviewing this footage from last week, what I think is happening is that the reamer is weeble wobbling about in that hole and removing more material on the front side and on the back side of the hole than it is in the middle, therefore causing the problem that we see with the pins. So I'm going to need to reprint these parts so that I can re-ream the holes. And whilst we're doing that, we might as well tweak the settings in the, uh, in the slicing software to try and um, improve the stiffness. This is our slicing software, and what this does is it takes our 3D model as an input, it generates a number of tool paths and uh, instruction sets called G-code that the 3D printer can understand and will actually execute in order to make the part. Now, contrary to what you might think, uh, 3D printed objects are generally not printed solid. They're normally hollow, and uh, there's some good reasons for that, um, time to print, cost, and a number of other reasons. Um, and we generally have some default settings with the, the, the software. Now, you can see that this print is made up of what we call perimeters, which are the outlines and then the infill which is the sort of the uh, the cubic structure on the inside I stuck with the defaults for the uh, first print that we did and the uh, the default is for two perimeters so the printer will literally go around the outside of each feature twice um, before moving on to the infill um, and the default for the infill is 20% so what I'm going to do is I'm going to up the infill to 40% I'm going to change the um, the pattern uh, to make it a stiffer pattern and I'm going to change to four perimeters so it'll go around the outside of the part four times every every time so this should give us a stiffer part I've also made the parts a little bit thicker and that should help us with the rigidity, but it's also affected the aspect ratio of those holes. With the longer holes, the pin should have less opportunity to move around, I think. And it's time to ream those holes, um, this time in the milling machine, to keep everything nice and square and to ensure a bit more accuracy. With the uh, thicker plates that I've made, I'm gonna to need to make a new pin. So I've got some stainless steel rod here, uh, four millimeters in diameter, and I'm just uh, tapering the front of it there with a lathe file. Starting with some brass bar stock, I'm going to turn that down to 15 millimeters for the main head of the pin. And then I'm going to uh, turn an eight millimeter boss on that that we will later drill and ream to four millimeters uh, to accept the, um, the stainless steel pin that we just made.
And there we have the pin. Uh, I used a little bit of Loctite 648 just to secure the, uh, the actual shaft of the pin into the head there, and uh, that should do us nicely. And we'll check the fit of that pin in the uh, in the new pin plate in those freshly reamed holes. And that's looking pretty good. Um, almost no wiggle at all. Um, some of the some of the holes are slightly looser than others, but um, yeah, much much better than it was before. As I was reprinting this pin plate, I took the opportunity to um, make the idea of the central bore smaller so that um, we can refit this mandrel with the goal of uh, losing that sticky tape. And that fit is much better now. So let's get this thing assembled again and we'll check the fit with the full assembly. So we'll just check the stiffness of those plates before we check the fit of the pin. And yes, they're looking much, much better. Um, I think the thicker plates have helped and I think the new 3D printer settings have helped. So that's, uh, that's a good result. And that feels really good. The whole assembly feels much more solid, much tighter and uh, yeah, much less movement. So I'm, I'm really hopeful now that we're gonna have a good result. So there's only one thing to do now and that's to make some chips and see if we've uh, solved the source of those errors that we saw earlier on. I want different line lengths for the tens, the fives, and the ones. So um, I've set up a carriage stop on the uh, on the lathe bed, and uh, we're just going to do one full revolution here at ten degree intervals, um, cutting all the all the, the longest lines, all the ten degree markers. So we're coming around to one full revolution here and uh, everything's looking good so far, I think. Uh, the spacing looks good, so I think I'll move on to the five degree markers. So I'm gonna move the uh, carriage stock back a bit to make some shorter lines there and uh, move the pin to the uh, five hole and then go around and do all the, uh, the five markers. So that's looking promising. Uh, we've gone all the way around the um, around the circumference, and uh, and we're we're back to where we started, and everything's lined up. So on to the uh, one degree divisions now. So at this point, I think we're gonna have a good result, but um, with all those burrs in the way, it's a little difficult to see. So uh, I'm gonna give it a skim pass and see what we've actually got. So as you can see, we've got much better consistency in the uh, in the widths between the lines there. So what that means is um, we've got better angular accuracy and less movement in the dividing head and uh, a better all round result. One problem we did have, as you can see as I'm moving around the part here, is that these lines are getting longer as we move around the part. And you'll see that when we get to back to the beginning. And the problem there was that the carriage stop wasn't uh, done up tight enough. And every time I moved it across to make an incision, uh, it bumped it forward a little bit. So something to watch out for in the future. Not necessarily a problem here because it's a test part, but if this had been a real part, it would have been quite upsetting. One other thing that I would like to improve is the quality of these lines. Um, they're quite thick uh, and I've been getting quite a lot of tear out. Now that's all down to tool geometry. Uh, I, I've just been using this uh, this threading tool here um, as, a, as a kind of test for, for scribing these lines. And uh, this is something that we're gonna address in a future video when I get around to building this graduating tool from uh, Hemingway Kits. So I'm going to call this lathe spindle index a finish for now. Uh, it remains to be seen how long these 3D printed parts hold up. Um, I am considering making uh, another version with metal plates. So if you'd like to see that, then uh, let me know in the comments. If you're interested in building one of these yourself, I made the STL files uh, for the 3D printed parts and the drawings available on my Patreon for free. Or for a small fee, you can download them from my shop at jonesymakes.com. Links in the description. I'd like to say a big thanks to everybody that subscribes and uh, an extra special thanks to my patrons. Um, I hope you join me next time for the graduating tool, which will be a companion tool to this project. And a big thanks for watching to the end, folks. It's really appreciated.